Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to another video. In this video, I'll be talking about composite and inverse functions. Now, before we get into this video, I'm assuming you know about functions, you know the rules of functions and you're comfortable with using functions already. So I'm not going to go into what functions are or the rules of functions. I'm just going to get straight into composite functions first and then go over some inverse function problems. Okay, so let's start on composite functions. So if we take two functions like uh, f, the function f, and we say that equals 2x plus 1, and then we have another function g, and that equals x squared plus, uh, a composite function would be combining these two functions. So I could say, I might want to find the function f of g. And so what I have to do here is to put the function g into the function f. Uh, so I'm adding two functions together basically, or combining two functions, so we call those composite functions. And here we have, uh, so the question is asking, find f of g. Now remember this x here in this function is the input. And so if I'm saying the input is another function, I need to put that function, x squared plus 1, in into the space where the input needs to go. So this is going to look like uh, 2 times x squared plus 1, and then I have that plus 1 on the end. So I've taken this function and inputted it where the x is in this function here. And then I can uh, just go ahead and solve this. So firstly expand the brackets, this is going to be 2x squared plus 2 plus 1, and then simplify uh, 2x squared plus 3. So f of g is going to be 2x squared plus 3. And uh, we could also do this the other way around. So we could ask for the function of g of f. And you'll notice something about these two functions in a minute. Uh, so if we find the function g of f, we need to take the function f and input it to, into the function g. Uh, so where this x is, Consider this kind of like an empty box or a space where we can put things in. We take this function 2x plus 1 and put it into here. So we need to uh, square 2x plus 1 and add 1. And then we can go ahead and solve this. So expand those brackets out and multiply. And we get uh, 2x times 2x, that's 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 and plus 1 again and then simplify so 4x squared plus 4x plus 2. Okay so now you notice that g of x, uh, sorry g of f is not the same as f of g. So that's a common element of functions, of composite functions is that uh, it, the order matters. So so if we take f of g, it's not going to be equal to g of f. And so that's the basics of composite functions. And then questions can get more complicated when you, uh, you know, combine different elements of algebra. So we could get a question saying something like, uh, saying something like solve, solve 2 f of g equals g of f. Uh, so here we need to uh, take the, the solutions to these functions, make them equal and then solve the equation. So I have f of g, that's 2x squared plus 3. So I need to multiply that by 2. So it's going to be 2 times 2x plus 3. And I also have g of f, which is 4x squared plus 4x plus 2. Um, so that's on the right hand side and now I have my equation I can go ahead and solve this for x so expand these brackets out first this is going to be 4x squared plus 6 equals 4x squared plus 4x plus 2 As we have 4x squared on both sides so if we subtract them they will cancel out and then uh, perhaps you could Subtract 2 from the left hand side, so we get 4 equal to 4x, 
and then divide by 4 so what we're going to end up with is x equal to 1 and if you want to check that substitute that into the original equation and you would find that that's the answer okay so from this basic element of combining two functions inputting one function into another function you can get more complicated looking questions and uh, this is nothing you probably haven't done before which is just solving an equation with one unknown uh, but the, I guess the new element is this new notation of using function notation so it adds just a, a slight level of difficulty to the question okay so now I want to go on and talk about inverse functions so you can be given a function such as uh, f of x or f equals 1 over x and then you might want to find the inverse of that so we typically write that as f to the minus 1 which stands for f inverse and uh, so the first thing we need to do is we say that let f equal y because the idea of an inverse is that we can take the output and find the input now when we're talking about a typical function that gives us that gives us the output given any input and what the inverse function does is gives us the input given any output uh, so we first thing we do is we let f of x equal y in other words the output uh, so we can say y equals 1 on x and rearrange to get x by itself so in this case we'll multiply this side by x so x y equals 1 and then divide by y so x equals 1 on y and now what this equation is doing is saying if we input y we will get x in other words if we input what we originally called the output we will get the input so that's the idea of an inverse function and so now we change the letters so the the output becomes the input in other words the output becomes x so we call this f inverse f to the minus 1 and the y becomes the input so this is going to be 1 on x so this gives us the so this gives us the input of the original function given any output so you can see it's just the opposite or the inverse of the original function I hope that makes sense so let's just do one other example of this um, so you might be given a function like 2x minus 4 and you're asked to find the inverse so remember the first step is to let f equal y and then say y equals 2x minus 4 and then rearrange for x so add 4 to the left hand side so this is going to be y plus 4 equals 2x and then divide by 2 so y plus 4 divided by 2 equals x and so x equals y plus 4 divided by 2 and now remember that y or that output becomes the input and we call this the inverse function so we can say f inverse equals x plus 4 divided by 2 and uh, that's pretty much the method you can use in in all cases when you're asked for an inverse function so as long as you practice that method enough and you can understand it and me remember how to do it then you'll be fine with questions on inverse functions and then they can just get slightly more difficult um, so you can get questions such as this one where you're given f which is 4x plus 5 and they ask you to prove that uh, f of f inverse equals x uh, so this is asking you to first find the inverse function and then input that into the original function so the first thing we have to do is to find the inverse function and remember that that means letting f equal y and so we can say y equals 4x plus 5 and then rearrange to get x by itself so this is going to be y minus 5 on 4 equals x so subtract that 5 divide by 4 and then therefore f inverse equals x minus 5 divided by 4 and 
now we want f of f inverse. So we take this function and input that into the original function. Uh, so f of f inverse, and we can change that input to be x minus 5 on 4. And this is going to be 4 times x minus 5 on 4 plus 5. And now we just need to simplify this right hand side. So 4 multiplied by this fraction, well the 4, 4 divided by 4 is just 1, so we can cancel those 4s out. And on the next line, we are just left with x minus 5 plus 5. Well, minus 5 plus 5, that's 0. So we're just left with x. And so therefore, we can say f of f inverse equals x. So we've proven what they've asked us to prove. And lastly, you can get questions such as this one. So it might say find g given g equals mx plus c and the function f equals 2x plus 3 and f of g equals 6x plus 7. Okay, so this is saying that the function g must be a straight line. Remember, this is the general equation of a straight line, mx plus c. And we're given a new function, f, and we're told that when we input the function g into f, we get 6x plus 7. So in order to find the function g, uh, we can input this general equation into f. So we can say that f of g will be 2 times mx plus c plus 3. So I've taken this here and inputted it into f of x, where the x is. Right, so I've got 2 times mx plus c plus 3. And then start to simplify this. So this is going to be 2mx plus 2c plus 3. And uh, we're also told that f of g equals 6x plus 7. So I have an expression here for f of g, which I can make equivalent to this expression up here. Now in this expression, 2mx will be equivalent to 6x. So therefore, I can say that 2m equals 6, right? So this coefficient of x must equal this coefficient of x because these are the same functions, f of g. Uh, so that allows me to say that m equals 3. Also, 2c plus 3 must equal 7. Uh, so that allows me to solve for c. So 2c equals 4. So c must equal 2. And uh, so I have m, I have c, so therefore I can say that g will equal 3x plus 2 for my final answer. Okay, so that are the general types of questions you get in terms of composite and inverse functions. I'll leave some practice problems in the description. In GCSEs, if you understand these basics of inputting a function into another function and this method of finding inverse functions, then you should be fine with this topic. Let me know if you have any further questions. If I missed anything out, let me know in the comments. Leave a like if you appreciated this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.